Welcome back. Disgraced former police commissioner Jackie Salibi went to his grave last month protesting his innocence. In his last television interview, Salibi told a documentary filmmaker there was a conspiracy against him. But just months after that 2011 interview, the Supreme Court of Appeal confirmed his conviction on charges of corruption. Many of the interview excerpts you are about to see have been broadcast for the first time this past week. On the 14th of July 2011, former police chief Jackie Salibi gave his last on-camera interview to documentary filmmaker Warren Batchelor. Batchelor has since released his movie about the Brett Kebble murder. At the time, Salibi had already been convicted and sentenced to 15 years in jail for corruption, but was waiting for the outcome of his appeal. That, that conviction is a false conviction. Salibi was found guilty of having a corrupt relationship with Glenn Agliotti, a convicted drug dealer who was charged with the murder of mining magnate Brett Kebble, a charge that he would later be acquitted of. Salibi says the Scorpions used that murder charge to force his one-time friend to turn on him. They made him a hostage by taking him, charging him with murder when they know he didn't commit. Salibi never makes any mention of his relationship with Agliotti being part of an intelligence operation, as now claimed by former crime intelligence boss Mulangi Mpeko. He does, however, claim unnamed investigators have compiled a 150-page document that exposes the truth behind his prosecution. What is contained in this document? All of the wrong things that they have done. All of the wrong things that they have done, including money laundering. Who's they? The people who are accusing me. And why, why can't you get to this document? Let me just finish with this appeal and everything will come out. But that never happened. Salibi's appeal was dismissed just months after this interview. He would spend less than a year in jail before being released on medical parole. Salibi died on the 23rd of January, a broken and bankrupt man. Karen Morn, Johannesburg. Controversy over plans to name a highway after former President F.W. de Klerk reached a conclusion this week. While many voiced their opinion that he did not deserve the honor, former President Khalima Mutlante came out in his support. He said de Klerk played an important role in the transition to democracy. It's been 25 years since F.W. de Klerk delivered a speech unbanning the ANC and other political parties. It set in motion the release of Nelson Mandela. Africanist Congress, the South African Communist Party and a number of subsidiary organizations is being rescinded. <laughs> Two and a half decades later, de Klerk says it was his moral conviction and not political pressure as some say that paved the way for his historic speech. It was motivated by our realization that if we wanted there to be a future for South Africa and for all our children, we would have to find real and lasting solutions to the problems that had for so long divided us. As de Klerk's legacy is remembered, the city of Cape Town wants to celebrate him. It wants to rename a part of the N1 highway after him. The plan has had its fair share of detractors, but Mutlanti says de Klerk should be rightly honored for his contribution. Like Katrada, I see absolutely nothing wrong in uh, honoring former president de Klerk, because indeed the 2nd of February was an important uh, milestone in our journey to democracy. Mutlanti says leaders like Nelson Mandela describe F.W. de Klerk as a man of integrity. We must accept all of those who contributed to its democracy. Lester Kivitz, Cape Town. And on Friday this week, the decision was made. Table Bay Boulevard in Cape Town was officially renamed F.W. de Klerk Boulevard. Hijackings and smash and grabs are an all too familiar reality for many South Africans. One car dealership in Gauteng is cashing in on the demand for safer vehicles. Once the preserve of presidents and royalty, more and more people are demanding bulletproof cars. These cars are being fitted with bulletproof armor. 
Afterwards, they won't look any different from regular vehicles. We strip the car. From there, we install, cut and trim the armor. Then we recover the car. The body of the vehicle is bolstered with a layer of bulletproof plastic. This is really, you know, it's bendable. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to give an impression of weight, but weighs next to nothing. Anderson is willing to put his neck on the line to prove his cars are safe. Okay, and that shows you there, running your hand down, there's absolutely no damage whatsoever to the glass. One Johannesburg dealership has sold four armoured vehicles in the past week alone. A lot more people have heard about armoured cars and are considering it as an option, uh, both uh, for their family members and for companies, for directors and CEOs. This luxury brand now comes in three different armoured models, complete with a warranty and maintenance plan. And the price? Anything from one to more than three million rand. But there are cheaper options, trade-ins. They are available from as little as 300,000 rand. Armoured cars are proof that safety can be bought at a price, but it's no solution to violent crime. Aaron Bates, Johannesburg. And now to a story of a remarkable young woman. Monique Gabriels was almost three when she was first admitted to Tigerberg Children's Hospital. Twenty years later, she's still there. Hospital staff say she's displayed incredible courage and they're now trying to raise funds for her so she can go home at last. Mani Gabriels has virtually been confined to the Tigerberg Children's Hospital for most of her life. Well, she was struggling to breathe, we put her on a ventilator and it's only when we try to get her off the ventilator that we realized there was something else wrong. She'd actually um, had a, an injury to her cervical spinal cord and that is the whole area of the, of the brain and the spinal cord that controls breathing. If she's taken off the machine, she will die. Doctors didn't believe she will survive longer than 10 years, but hospital staff say Gabriel's battles adversity with a great sense of humor. They bring me the food until the night, so I don't have a question about the food. When the hospital said, not nice, then I will eat for a month. Because then I'm there, she's standing, she's standing there. Monique has been home only four times in the past 20 years, transporting her, her family of seven, as well as her ventilating equipment costs up to 3,000 rand a trip. Her emotional mother says funds are much needed. Many days we struggle tremendously because we don't have our own transport. We need to take the taxi to hospital and there are many days we can't because of our circumstances. Those who'd like to make a donation can SMS CHILD to 32724. Leanne Jansen, Cape Town. And finally, thousands of Proteus fans turned out to see their team off earlier this week. The South African team left on Wednesday for the Cricket World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. They've never won the tournament, but now they'll get another chance to prove their championship material. With the belief that this could be our year, fans came out in their droves to catch a final glimpse of their hopeful champions. Chris Gale and Dale Stane can't like, you know, win everything for the team. You need to have the whole team working together as a unit. Yes, we're feeling pressure and there's no hiding from that. Um, we've never won a World Cup and it's, it's, it's definitely something that's counting against us. People calling us chokers. There's no hiding from that. Um, we just got to stick together, drive each other as a team and make sure we, we win those big pressure situations. The sports minister says the nation is pinning its hopes on a win this time around. Go and live the dream and the dream of a winning nation and go and represent us with dignity and pride. While the rest of the world cuddles up with their loved ones on Valentine's Day, the Proteas will be dealing with the prospect of beating their first opponents, Zimbabwe, and finally succeeding on the world stage. Junior Steinbank in Johannesburg. From sad returns to hopeful departures, that's your week in one. Take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.